students we are back with an so in today's lesson we'll discuss the different types of nuclei so first one is your isotopes the atoms or elements which have the same atomic number but different mass number are called suppose you have any chemical element so how do you write it in nuclide form x z a so what is z z denotes your number of proton which is known as your atomic number a a is your mass number mass number denotes the total number of nucleons and nucleons are your protons or neutrons fine so what are isotopes all those isotopes which has the same atomic number fine suppose you have two elements suppose this is x1 this is x2 if x1 has one proton so z equals to one if x2 has also one proton then z equals to one in this case fine so in this case if all if these two elements have the same atomic number in this case they have the same atomic number but different mass number their mass number can be different such type of nuclei will be called as isotopes okay let's take an example so we all know about hydrogen hydrogen are generally found in three categories fine the first one is your proteum now in this proteum you have only one proton so if there is one proton what will be its atomic number its atomic number will be one fine and how many nucleons one proton therefore its mass number a equals to also one fine so this is your proteum next is your deuterium in deuterium how many protons you have you have one proton apart from having one proton you also have a neutron if you have one neutron so what will be its atomic number sorry what will be its mass number one proton and one neutron two so the hydrogen atom which has two nucleons out of which one is proton will be known as your deuterium and the final third one in this case you have one proton so what will be its atomic number z equals to one apart from this one you have a neutron and second neutron so what will be its mass number mass number will be three so hydrogen ha have atom having three nucleons out of which one is a proton will be known as your tritium so in all of these categories can you notice one thing they all have same atomic number check one 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 they all have the same atomic number that means they have the same number of protons one proton one proton one proton fine apart from this one they have different mass number in this case the mass number is one in this case the mass number is two in this case the mass number is one two three so they have different mass numbers so this is an example of your isotope moving on we the atoms having the same mass number but different atomic number are called isobars so let's take an example you have argon you have potassium you have calcium now inside argon you have 18 protons and 22 neutrons so if it has 18 protons what is its atomic number 18 if there are 22 neutrons what will be its mass number mass number for argon 18 plus 22 8 to 10 2 3 4 40 fine so what is the mass number of argon 40 let's take the example of potassium potassium also has 19 protons so its atomic number will be 19 fine next how many neutrons are there 21 if there are 21 neutrons what will be its atomic number the sum of proton plus neutron 19 plus 21 this is also 40 now let's take example of calcium calcium has 20 protons if 20 protons then what will be its atomic number 20 if there are 20 neutrons then what will be its mass number 20 plus 20 equals to how much 
40. So can you see this three atoms? In this three atoms, they all have same mass number, right? But they have different atomic number. That means the number of protons are different. Here it is for argon, 18 protons, for potassium, 19 protons, for calcium, 20 protons. So such kind of nuclei will be known as your isobar. Moving on. Next is your isotones. The nucleus having the same number of neutrons are called isotones. They will be known as your isotrone. Okay, same neutrons. Let's take an example. So this is your carbon atom. This carbon atom, okay, has what is the mass number? 14. Mass number is 14. So how many protons are there? In a carbon atom, there are six protons. Fine. Now let's take an example of this nitrogen. In nitrogen, okay, what is the mass number, total number of protons and neutrons in this case? Fifteen. Apart from this one, what is the total number of protons? One, two. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So how many protons are there? 7. Fine. Now, if I tell you to calculate the number of neutrons, what will be the number of neutrons? Okay, let us denote this neutrons with capital N. We know your mass number equals to the number of protons plus number of neutrons so what will be your neutrons your neutrons will be mass number minus your atomic number so 14 minus 6 is how much 8 in this case what will be the number of neutrons for nitrogen 15 minus 7 8 fine so can you notice for carbon atom there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, uh, I missed some one neutron here. Okay, there should be one more neutron here. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so there are eight neutrons fine now similarly for nitrogen atom how many neutrons are there one two three four five six seven eight there are eight neutrons fine so whenever the nuclei are having the same number of neutrons they will be known as your isotones fine moving on the next one we'll discuss about isomers okay these are the nuclei with same atomic number same mass number but existing in a different energy states okay so let us take an example of cobalt 58 okay this cobalt 58 has 58 nucleons okay so if you take a cobalt atom okay this is a radioactive element okay so what happens it generally radiate energy okay it radiate energy for now you can understand like radiating energy it's like losing a part of its atom okay so while radiating energy okay while losing some of its part okay it keeps on radiating radiating and radiating okay so this atom will be reduced to half in your 71 days fine it takes 71 days for this cobalt 58 to reduce into the half quantity of itself whereas there is one more 
cobalt atom fine but this cobalt atom is at a higher energy state or i'll say that it has uh, the electrons in this cobalt are having higher energy levels fine in this case what happens to reduce it into half it reduces in nine hours fine so can you take a look the first cobalt atoms take 58 sorry your first cobalt atom takes 71 days this one takes 71 days to reduce into half whereas your second cobalt or i'll say the meta cobalt atom will take how many days it doesn't take days it takes nine hours so it is disintegrating very fast this atom is disintegrating very fast now why is this one disintegrating very fast because this is unstable okay this one is unstable whereas this one is more stable as compared to your this case so therefore this one is taking 71 days now this one is unstable so it is taking only nine hours fine so why this unstability because of the different energy levels okay in this case they have lower energy levels but in this meta cobalt atom they have higher energy levels so therefore they is disintegrate very fast fine so for one cobalt atom we can get two categories one is your normal cobalt atom the other one is your meta cobalt atom so such kind of two nuclei of one element will be known as your isomers these nuclei will have the same atomic number same mass number but they will have different energy fine so such kind of nuclei will be known as your isomer fine moving on units and some standard quantities which will use throughout one is your one atomic mass unit fine so what is your one atomic mass unit okay let's stick carbon okay the most abundantly found atom in the nature is your carbon this carbon what is the mass number 12 it has a mass number 12 that means how many protons are there six protons six protons and how many neutrons six neutrons okay now people they have found out the weight of this carbon atom okay the carbon atom weighs around 1.966 times 10 to the power minus 26 kgs fine now as we know that suppose this is your carbon atom the weight of the carbon atom generally means the weight of its nuclei why we call it nuclei because the mass of the electrons is negligible as compared to its nuclei so whenever you measure the mass of the atom we generally measure how much its nuclei weigh okay because their electrons are very very light fine so if we fine so the weight of this nucleus is 1.966 times 10 to the power minus 6 26 kg okay so uh, it will be not feasible every time we use such a big quantity for our calculation okay so what we can do is we can measure the mass of the individual nucleon and use it as a standard unit okay that standard unit is your one atomic mass unit fine so what will be the one atomic mass unit if you have six protons six neutron and the weight of the nucleus is 1.9662678 so you divide so how many total mass number or how many total nucleons are there 12 to find out the mass of the individual what you'll do divide this mass by 12 okay by dividing it by 12 what happens we get the mass of a individual nucleon and that mass will be known as your one atomic mass unit so what is this one atomic mass unit it is 1 by 12th can you see this 1 by 12th of the mass of the carbon at c12 atom so this is the mass of the c12 atom 
So this is one AMU fine. So we will measure all of the constituents of atom in respect to AMU fine. Fine. So uh, if I or the so up to be 1.66 times 10 to the power minus 27 kg okay so uh, this is the mass so 1 by 12th mass or i'll say the mass of one nucleon okay so let us say what will be the mass of electrons in terms of one amu okay these are the standard values okay we won't derive it you can just remember the values like suppose in this case the mass of the electron is somewhere around 0 0.55 amu okay so we know the mass of the electron is 9.11 times 10 to the power minus 31 kg for our calculation in terms of amu we can write as 0 0.0055 next the mass of the proton the proton mass we know is how much 1.6726 times 10 to the power minus 27 kg in terms of amu i'll write it as 1.0073 amu fine now in similar manner the mass of the neutron is how much 1.6749 times 10 to the power minus 27 kg and in terms of AMU, it will be 1.0086, fine. So this is the mass of the proton and mass of the neutron. Apart from this one, can you see the mass of the proton? It is 1.0073 AMU and the mass of the neutron 1.0086. They are very close to each other, okay, isn't it? If they are very close to each other, I can say the mass of the proton and mass of the neutron are somewhat equal to each other, isn't it? Fine, as you can see, it is 1.0073 amu, 1.0086 amu. So there isn't much difference in the mass of the proton and neutron as compared to the mass of the electron. Fine. Okay. Now uh, we have found out the mass in terms of amu. Fine. Now next we will find out if we have this one AMU. Okay. And if this mass is converted into energy, then how much energy it will give us? Okay. For that you can use this relation E equals to mc square, the famous Einstein relation. Okay. In this case, what is the mass? The mass is one AMU what is c the c is speed of the light okay so uh, 1 amu in terms of this kg it is 1.66 times 10 to the power minus 27 speed of light is how much 3 times 10 to the power 8 since there is a square you do the square take the product of these two quantities you will get whatever quantity will be in joules okay this joules after you convert it into electron volt or mega electron volt which i'll discuss now it comes somewhere around 931 mega electron volts so one amu in terms of energies okay this is your mass this is your energy so if you are converting one AMU mass into energy, how much energy it will give us? 931 mega. Now apart from this one, what is electron volt in this case? Or I'll say what is one electron volt? One electron volt means 1.602 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules. Okay, this is a standard conversion. If you want to convert electron volts to joules or joules to electron volt okay so one joule electron volts is how much 1.602 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules fine now what is your one mega ohms mega means 10 to the power 6 so i it means 10 to the power 6 electron volts fine so uh, the next thing is that energy mass equivalence relation e equals to mc square so using this three we can find out the energy equivalence of one atomic mass unit which is 931 times mega electron volt fine 
So we have discussed about one AMU. One AMU is how much? 1.660565 times 10 to the power minus 27 kg. Mass of the electron in terms of AMU is 0 0.005 AMU. Mass of the proton in terms of AMU 1.0073 AMU. Mass of the neutron is 1.0086 AMU. Mass of proton and mass of neutrons are approximately equal to each other. And 1 AMU gives us how much? 931 mega electron volts if we convert it into energy. Fine. Apart from this one, 1 electron volts equals to 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19 and 1 mega electron volt is 10 to the power 6 electron volt. Fine. Moving on. The next thing we'll discuss is your nuclear size. Okay. So nucleus is very small. Okay. The nucleus of any atom is very small. So there is no apparatus which can measure the size of the nucleus. Okay. So what uh, people have usually done is that since this uh, nucleons are very, very small okay they they are very very small okay so they form a cloud around this at the center can you see this cloud okay this cloud is like a spear this cloud is like a spear so we can measure the mass of this cloud of nucleons okay so I can write Suppose this cloud is made up of different protons and neutrons. Okay, if they are made up of different protons and neutrons. So what is the different number of protons and neutrons? It is known as your mass number. Fine. Now, if I want to find out the radius of this nucleus or let us say if I want to find out this radius of this nucleus cloud cloud okay this atomic nucleus then we just now i've told you this is like a spherical in shape therefore let us consider this to be a sphere if this is sphere what is the volume the volume will be 4 by 3 pi r cube fine where well, what is this r r is the radius of this sphere so I can say 4 by 3 pi r cube is directly proportional to a. a is your mass number. Fine. Now since this are your constants, so we can ignore the constant. The only important part is r to the power 3 is directly proportional to a. Okay. If I send this 3 here, so I can write the radius of the nucleus is directly proportional to its mass number okay to the power 1 by 3 so the radius of the nucleus is proportional to the cube root of its mass number so if i have to remove this proportionality sign i have to introduce a constant this constant is known as your r naught so r equals to r naught a to the power 1 by 3 and this r naught is generally uh, considered as a constant whose value is 1.2 times 10 to the power minus 15 meter okay so minus 15 meter or minus 50 10 to the power minus 15 i can write as fermi so r not equals to 1.2 fermi meter i'll say 1.2 fermi or i can say fermtometer fine so 1.2 is Oh, sorry, one point so R not equals to one point two femtometer. Fine. Moving on. The nuclear density. Okay. Now this is your nucleus. Inside nucleus you have protons and neutrons. That means you have different kind of nucleons. Okay. So if you have different kind of nucleons, then let a be the mass number what is this mass number the different the number of the total nucleons and let us consider r to be as the radius of the nucleus okay so we have considered this to be as a sphere and let this one as the radius capital r if m is the average mass of a nucleon okay if small m is the mass of a nucleon whether it be a proton 
or whether it be a neutron. We will consider it as m. Why? Because the mass of the proton and neutron, they are very close to each other. Okay, so we consider to be some standard unit, like suppose let us consider their mass to be m. Fine. Then what will be the mass of the nucleus? If one nucleon has a mass how much? m. So how many nucleons are there? There are a number of nucleons. What is a? Mass number. So what will be the total mass of the nucleons? Am. So I can say the mass of the nucleus equals to ma. Fine. Now just now I've said this is a sphere. If this is a sphere, what will be the volume of the sphere? 4 by 3 pi r cube. Now r we have just derived how much it is equal to r naught a to the power 1 by 3. On simplification, I can write 4 by 3 pi r naught cube a. Fine. So what is the volume of the nucleus? 4 by 3 pi r naught cube a. So what will be the nuclear density? Nuclear density denoted as rho nu. This nu stands for nuclear, the nucleus equals to your mass of the nucleus. What is the mass of this nucleus? The mass of the nucleus we have just found out it is how much? Ma divided by the volume of the nucleus. On simplification, we can get, uh, substitute the values, cancel this A, we get the density as 3m by 4 pi r naught cube. So nuclear density is independent of the mass number. Can you see? My nuclear density is independent of the mass number. It doesn't depend upon how many protons or neutrons you have. It only depends upon your mass number. That means how much this nucleus weighs and radi and this constant R naught. R naught is a constant. Okay. This 3, 4 pi R cube, they are all constant. So your density depends only the mass. If the nucleus have more mass, the density will be more. That means the atoms will be very tightly packed. The density means higher the density means tightly packed. If you have less mass, if the mass is small, that means the nuclear uh, nucleons will be loosely packed okay there will be big spaces between the individual nucleons so the important point which we have learned from here is that uh, this formula nucleus density equals to 3m by 4 pi r naught cube and the next thing is that nuclear density does not depend upon the mass number or it doesn't depend upon the size of the nucleus right So that's it for today's class. Thank you. And if you have any confusion, please feel free to ask. I will re-explain it to you again. So thank you.